Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife, nope, not knife, gear nerdery. Yeah, let's go with that. Today we have a small details review of the Ever Ratchet and Ever Ratchet Clip keychain pry bar multi-tools from Gear Infusion. Now that space is an incredibly overcrowded one, so to stand out, you have to be doing something really clever. And fortunately, that's exactly what we have here. There is an incredible amount of small details and clever engineering packed into a very small space. I first learned about these when this one, the original, was released as an Indiegogo project maybe a year or two ago, but I kind of forgot all about them. I was reminded of them recently when I learned that they're actually made by a friend of a friend. I have a good friend named Dan, and he's the guy who gave me this tactile turn bolt action pen. Dan used to work with a guy named Brian, Brian's mechanical engineer, and over the years he got more and more interested in designing kind of bottle opener keychain tools, and he started bringing in some prototypes that he showed to Dan and others, and Dan actually got to keep some of them, and eventually he just went all in. He invented this concept here, which we'll talk about in a moment, and created this company called Gear Infusion. He quit his full-time job and ended up releasing the Ever Ratchet. Eventually, he released this version, the Ever Ratchet Clip, and you can kind of think of this as a V2, and it's, in some ways it's an upgraded version. There's some things that are actually meaningfully better about this one in, in very small, subtle ways. But the real thing is that they're just kind of different, so they still sell both versions, and there's definitely reasons why you might choose one over the other. In fact, I'm told this is the most popular version. I don't have any affiliation with Brian. I bought these both with my own money, which is something I was able to do in part because these are remarkably affordable, especially given their competition. We'll talk about that towards the end. But the other reason is because I figured I wanted to try them both out, see what I liked better or worse, but I also figured I'd give one away as a giveaway on the channel. We'll talk about that more later. This is not the giveaway video. We'll see. Okay, that's coming up. So what do we have here? Let's talk about what is actually going on with these and what makes them so dang clever. Okay, let's talk about some of the features they've packed into these. For the most part, it's the same between the two, and so I'll call out where things differ as we go. Let's start with one of the obvious ones. There's these hex wrenches over here. This top one will work for both a 5 16 inch and 8 millimeter hex. Those are about the exact same size, close enough that this will work for both. And below, we have a 7 millimeter. If we pop out this number two Phillips head screwdriver bit, which is being held in place by these O-rings. By the way, if you buy this version, it does come with extra O-rings. Uh, it's the same kind of uh, technique you'll find on like a Vero Fulcrum or something. Anyway, over here you'll see another one of these cascading hex setups. And so this one was going to fit a 3 16 and a 5 millimeter, and this one will fit a 6 millimeter. Over here, we've got a quarter inch hole. And this is the kind of thing that you'll find on a lot of tools like this. So they'll just punch a quarter inch hole through, and the idea is that you can use it as a bit driver for these types of standard screwdriver bits. And it works perfectly fine. And if you want a whole bunch of leverage, this is going to be the ability to really crank down and apply a ton of force. But you'll know if you've ever tried using one of these, it kind of sucks for the same reason that any static screwdriver sucks. It doesn't ratchet. And that's the big key feature of this one. Here we have a version that will take this bit right here, hold it in place, which is cool in itself, and then this bar acts as a tension bar, which means that if you turn it in one direction, it presses into this corner and spins the bit. But if you turn it in the other direction, it pops that bar up and spins around the bit. So they've managed to fit a ratcheting bit driver into this tool, and how freaking clever is that? Now you'll see that it also holds the bit in place, and that's great because one of the things that sucks about these is that for the most part, they just kind of slide out. And that means it's a lot harder to kind of get this into the right spot because as you turn this upside down, the bit just falls out. And here, when you turn it upside down, the bit stays in place. Heck of a lot easier. However, you will notice that the bit slides out a little bit more easily from this one than it does over here. One of the things they talked about is ever so slightly making this a tighter fit, and so this one does hold the bit slightly better in place. Now, if you want this to turn the other direction, so you'll see all you have to do is flip it upside down. So with this direction, it ratchets this way, clockwise and turns counterclockwise. If you flip it upside down, it's now going to ratchet counterclockwise and turn clockwise. This alone 
is the killer feature and enough to make this so much better than any other bit driver on any other pry tool I've ever seen. This is patented. This is incredibly clever. Oh my God. When I saw this, it blew my mind at how just simplistic and simple it is in that way. That's the, the best ideas almost always are. Now let's talk a little bit about how they're pulling us on the second one. Why does this one have O-rings and this one doesn't? In this one, the bit lives in this little groove right here. And you can see it just slides in and out. And so these O-rings hold it in place. In the V2, or the clip version, they've managed to get away with not having those O-rings by instead using the tension of this ratchet bar itself to hold it in place. If we pop this out, you'll see that we have these little tiny grooves right here. They call them catch tooths or undercut bit catch tooths. And those hold it in place sliding this direction. And you pop it in and out like that. Yeah, it's super easy. And in fact, it holds really, really well. This doesn't rattle, it doesn't do anything. You can kind of get it to rattle if you just go like that. But for the most part, this is really in there very securely. Now, you do have one downside from the fact that you're losing the O-rings. And what that means is that you can only hold something that's exactly this size. So what that brings us to is one of the things that the Ever Ratchet has that the clip doesn't. The Ever Ratchet comes with a fire starting ferro rod. So instead of having your bit in here, you could, if you want, have a fire starting ferro rod. It's held in place the exact same way. And the idea is that you basically hold it, you take the sharp end of this and knock it against it and it will create sparks. Um, you can also sometimes hold this one in place and pull it back and that's better for not you know, pushing your tinder out of the way. But anyway, that only works because it's being held in place here because the act of using this is going to slightly deform it, slightly scrape it away and eventually it wouldn't be held in place securely by these and would just fall out. So for that reason, they don't even include one with this. So one of the things that you might make you choose this one over this is to be able to have that fire starter, which again comes with for free. Now, if you look down here, you'll see that we have a bottle opener because what self-respecting keychain multi-tool doesn't have a bottle opener. And at first glance, they might look exactly the same, but it's actually been slightly improved on the clip version. This sharp corner right here has just been rounded out slightly and moved slightly further down. The rounding out means it's just somewhat more pleasant. This is kind of jabby. We'll talk about the sharp corners on this thing when we talk about what's subtly wrong with this thing to begin with, although it's pretty dang good. But this is definitely the sharpest part of the entire thing. And on this one, it's just rounded. It's just a little bit more pleasant to touch. But the bigger thing is being slightly further down makes it easier to get on. So on both of these, they work really, really well. But you'll see that this one has to come in at a reasonably acute angle to begin with. And by having that tip slightly further down, this comes in, it's just a little bit easier to put on. It's kind of subtle, but the other one is maybe more like this, and this one's more like that. And so I find that this one is just a little bit easier to hook on, although both are pretty darn easy. And they both work really, really well. But what this brings us to next is these grip points, because that's one of the differences between the two. Both of them have this like kind of pad right here for you to wedge your finger into. And you can do it in many different grips. You can press like this for scraping. This works as a fantastic scraping tool. This front bit can also work as a flathead screwdriver, of course. But when you're doing that lifting torque, I find the most natural way to hold this is to kind of hold it like this. I just pinch it between my two fingers and you'll see that my finger lands on this grip zone and this grip zone. I can't do that same grip period over here, at least not comfortably, because not only am I not landing on the, on the grip zone, but I'm actually pressing into this hole. And this is probably the second sharpest point on this thing. So if you go like that, that kind of sucks. What you ended up having to do is moving your finger further back. And this is nowhere near as natural a grip but it actually is a more natural or more useful grip when you're trying to use it as a bottle opener. Because if you're using it as a bottle opener, you want to hold back here and pull up. It's not that you can't hold it back there on the other one, but in this one, you have to. So on the one hand, I don't know, is that good? Is that bad? I will say that if you're using this as a scraper, I find this grip for scraping to be definitely the most comfortable. And so you don't get that quite as good on here because your thumb ends up going into this hole some. 
But if you're scraping, you're typically pressing forward, which means that your fingers, your thumb is like pressing on this spot. So this is actually not bad and still pretty comfortable. And you can put a decent amount of force going forward. So what's the deal with this little notch here? Why do we have this slot? And why is this called the ever ratchet clip? Well, one thing this lets you do is slide this over your belt loop and hang it from your pants if you want. But that same slot lets you clip this on and off of a key ring way more easily. Yeah, you can definitely put a keyring through either of these two holes, but it just kind of sucks. You know, it's that same process of putting keyring on anything. You have to pry it open with your finger, and this is a reasonably wide gap. With this version, you can bring it on and off relatively easily, but they're very careful to design this channel here to get narrow enough that while you can slide it on and off deliberately, it won't come back out on its own. You have to have this just torqued out enough for it to slide out, and that's really cool. Now these indentations here that I mentioned earlier for grip are also acting as a ruler. On both of these we have a metric and imperial ruler built in. Up here we have a centimeter with millimeter lines marked off and you'll notice that it's completely smooth except for this one which we'll talk about in a moment. And so you only have the laser engraving marks in order to be able to measure them. On the bottom on both of these we have half of an inch with sixteenths of an inch marked off. But on this version, we have both laser engraving lines and these indentations. Over on the clip, they did rid of those lines, and I honestly don't know why. I think it would have made sense to still have them here. But you don't really need them, because these indentations give you enough of a clear delineation that you can still measure things very easily. Now let's talk for a moment about why we had this notch right here, because you'll notice we don't up here. And that's one of the features that this one has that this one doesn't. These actually allow you to measure angles. Well, sort of. Measures maybe the wrong word. It should draw angles. Let's see. This is a piece of paper, and this is my only straight edge. So what we do is we say that basically this line right here and this line right here line up with each other perfectly. And so as a result, we can get a 90 degree angle. So if we put this down here on a piece of paper and we mark this spot and we mark this spot, if we were to draw a straight line between those, that gives us a 90 degree angle. Now this one right here allows us to measure a 30 degree, and this one allows us to do a 45. So if we put this back down on our corner right there, and make a spot right here, and a spot right here, if we now connect these lines, And what we'll see is that this is a 30 degree angle and this is a 45. Now I asked them why they removed this feature because I honestly think they still could have included it. And they said that partly it's the shape and design. Having to shift this over meant that there wasn't an easy way to shift it the same way, and they could have mirrored it, but then that's kind of negative angles, and it's hard for people to understand. But the bigger thing they said is that people just didn't understand how to use this period, which is part of the reason why I wanted to show a live demo. Because they said that people found these just kind of confusing, and so the feedback they got is that most people weren't using it. Now, they also say that these indentations here can be used as a rough file. And I mean... Yeah, kinda. The reality is though, these are lobed. Like these are kind of rounded off. And as a result, this just doesn't add that much abrasion. And so I, I guess in a pinch against soft wood, this would kind of work. But I think this is one of the cases where they're a little bit stretching. What else do we have? Like I, I don't remember if I mentioned earlier that this can be used as a slotted screwdriver and this is a good scraper. Hmm. Oh, right. We've got that. Okay. So I don't know if you caught in the uh, picture of the prototype, but the prototype had a slot at the back that would work as a wire stripper. And from one side, it looks just like this, a little notch. But from the other side, it looks totally different. The kind that was on the prototype was a much more effective wire stripper because it basically has a chisel shape built into it. And that chisel allows it to have a sharp, crisp edge that can actually cut through the casing on wire like this. This version is just a straight up and down column. 
And so, yeah, maybe, maybe you could wedge this in here and get enough pressure that just the fact that this is a 90 degree angle edge would maybe cut in. But realistically, I don't think that's ever gonna really work. So I wanted to show you how you can still use this to strip wires and why this little notch is still useful. Basically what you're gonna do is use this crisp edge down here to score and break through this. And you basically just put it down like this, pick where you wanna cut the tip off and rub this back and forth. And you'll see that pretty quickly, we are cutting through this outer casing. And so you basically just wanna go around the entire thing and follow this through and run this back and forth. So, did I miss any spots? I did, right there. Okay, I think I might have gotten all the way around. We'll see, I didn't do a great job and you'll see how well this works or doesn't work. Basically, now that that is scored, we're gonna hook this into this corner here and try and catch it on that same spot. You can see it's still being caught right there. So I'm going to score this just a little bit more and then I'll probably be able to catch it. But this little groove here is hooking into this and pulling it. There we are. Now you can see that's not super easy to do. So this is the kind of thing that will work in a pinch, but if you're gonna be stripping wires all day, you want actual wire strippers. What the, the way these work is that they've got little holes here that will correspond to the common thickness of wire. And so what you'll do, let's watch the same thing in action. You'll line it up with the one, press it on, and just pull it right off. And you can see how much easier that was. So does it work? Yeah, kind of, eventually. Is there a better way of doing it? Absolutely. But that's kind of true of almost everything on here. The one thing I will say is that this ratcheting thing is actually really good. Usually you find in multi-tools like this that almost everything is a little bit of a compromise, and that's true even of like Leatherman's. But this is actually a really pretty functional ratcheting thing. So while all of these are good versions of things, this is actually pretty darn great. So the next difference I wanted to talk about is the materials. The original Ever Ratchet is available in stainless steel or titanium, while the Ever Ratchet clip is only available in titanium. But it's worth noting that they upgraded the type of titanium they're using in the clip. This one here is available in grade two titanium, but for the Ever Ratchet clip, they upgraded to grade five. Grade two is sometimes labeled as CP3, and grade five you'll sometimes see listed as 6AL4V or TC4, depending on where it's sourced. But the big difference between the two is that one has different alloys in, different metals in the alloy that give it better strength. And so yes, the grade five version is stronger. Now I asked them why they made that change, and I asked them very directly if they got any feedback that the grade two type wasn't uh, performing well as a pry bar tool. And they said that they hadn't received any negative feedback about that. The reason they chose to go to grade five for this is because of this long feature here. Having this really long pry bar means that if you push on the end, you have a lot of leverage. And so to have this still be strong, which man, this is very strong, they needed to upgrade to a slightly stronger version of titanium. I don't know if I remember, I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier or not, but the, another side effect of them moving to grade five is that they were able to upgrade this strength of this, this ratchet bar from 20 pounds of force to 25. The original is still available in grade two, and as I said, they haven't gotten any feedback that there's anything wrong with that. But I personally would like to see them upgrade the original to grade five titanium as well. So hopefully they'll do that at some point in the future. There is a slight price difference between these things. And so let's talk about price now, because honestly, this is one of the strongest selling points of this already really cool thing. The titanium version of this, oh yeah, the titanium version of this one costs 30 bucks. That's freaking crazy. The stainless steel version of this one, I think, cost 29. The 
titanium version of this one I think costs 37 and you might wonder why is the the titanium version of this cost more than that one since this one's using the better titanium and the reality I think is just that it has all these o-rings it comes with the striking rod and all that kind of stuff but at the end of the day these are all about 30 bucks and about 30 35 and that's freaking bonkers I can't believe they're able to do this at that price point where else do you find things at that range that's insane to to give you a kind of a point of reference let's look at this guy this is the three rivers manufacturing beverage utility tool there's actually a couple of these buts and this one in particular is called el chupa capra which is just a great great pun this is another made from titanium tiny little keychain bottle opener hex uh, bit driver multi-tool and yeah there's a lot less going on here but in this this costs i i think 20 bucks maybe 25 uh there's a couple different versions and they all cost about that range and the reality is this is good that's a good price for this if you look around things of, of this kind of general design and made of this general material easily cost more than that and so to have all of this functionality hitting about 30 bucks is insane how <laughs> how are they doing that that's so freaking good <sighs> but how are they doing that let's see let's talk about what's different between these in terms of build quality and finishing and how what, like are they cutting any corners the short version is eh, no not really these are amazing but there is a very subtle difference in finishing that i wanted to point out i don't know how these guys are made i don't know how they're cut out but these are cut using wire edm wire edm is a really cool machining practice where they have a, a very thin like a uh, kind of hair sized uh, thread of wire that has an electrical current that runs through it that literally burns through cutting through the metal and allows them to get these really really crisp tight corners in here and make really tight fine lines and get all these lines in here and make this so incredibly thin that's it's a really cool process to watch the consequence of that though is that these edges are pretty darn crisp everything around this is just left at that kind of sharp 90 degree angle and the end result is that these edges all feel a little bit scrapey in some places you want that to be scrapey like this whole scraping tool you want this to be a crisp edge oh i think i even forgot to mention that earlier but this little corner here works perfect for opening boxes it's just sharp enough and with your finger being able to push there that this works great for running along top of a box and cutting through tape anyway you want something to be sharp you kind of don't want everything to be sharp and on this version the only thing that's really sharp i mean these are all i just i kind of these aren't sharp in a way that's going to scrape you they're just sharp in a way that you feel it but this right here is jabby like i mentioned on this guy you have the same thing these are all these are all sharp and this is nice and rounded off but you have these like kind of pointy corner here and if i'm being honest i think this corner here is probably going to scrape things in your pocket just a little bit or at least runs that risk if it were me i might even go come in and knock these corners down just a little bit with some sandpaper that's me being super persnickety but maybe you'd feel the same way i don't know part of the issue is just that i'm used to this and then this is just beautifully wonderfully tumbled all of these corners are just really really soft and nice nothing about this is scrapey and it feels really wonderfully soft like that and so in comparison this feels really kind of utilitarian sharp edge there's other one other thing i want to talk about it's a little bit of a moot point but it's just kind of a, an example of of how subtle differences and how you make things affect stuff the very sharp clean edges here are straight up and down and as a result and this this just slides right in and out and it's a moot point because this thing has this whole feature where it holds the bit in place and that's that's the whole thing but if you do use this one it just slides in and out and that's what you'll find on most but sometimes they'll do what you find here and i'm not entirely sure how they're even doing this but sometimes you'll find that they cut this at a very subtle uh, ramp and as a result uh, the bit won't go in very far on this side, but it will, it even kind of wedges, it will go in on this side. And as a result, the bit kind of wedges in place here. It won't go all the way through. And this stays pretty well. And that avoids that problem of needing to 
uh, hold it in place or have it fall out. And so again, it's a moot point because of the way that this ratcheting feature works, but if it was designed a little bit more fancily, they could have made that wedge feature here too and made it so this didn't uh, slide right out in that direction either. Again, moot point, I've said that three times now, but just I wanted to point out another little fun detail about how these things can be made. So let's talk about my final thoughts. And the, the short version of my final thoughts is that, holy crap, these things are amazing. I can't believe how incredibly cool these are, how much they've been able to fit in such an incredibly small package, and I especially can't believe they're able to do that at 30 bucks. That blows my mind. These these types of pry bar multi-tools easily cost 50, 60, 70 bucks. If they have a fancy name on them, like, you know, there's ones from, I'm not gonna name names, but if you have a fancy name on it, they'll they'll easily hit 100, 150. You'll even find pry bar tools going for 200 if it's from a small maker. That being able to fit all of this incredible amount of functionality and this incredibly cool feature, which again, you'll not find anywhere else in the 30, $35 price range blows my mind. As I mentioned earlier, the other thing that that price let me do is pick up both of these to give one away. I don't know if you noticed, I don't know why you would have, but I recently hit 500 subscribers and that itself blows my mind. And that's really, really cool. I wanted to celebrate. I kind of thought when I got these that I would have this video up before I ever hit 500, but honestly that snuck up on me and happened way faster than I was expecting. I was also kind of thinking that I would pick a favorite and then give away the other one, which is maybe a little bit mean, but the reality is, I kind of like them both equally. They're just different. One's not actually better than the other. And so what I decided I'm gonna do is let whoever wins the giveaway pick whichever one they like the best and they can have that one. And if you pick this one, you'll get this extra ferro rod and, and uh, O-rings with it. And uh, so the other fun thing is, um, be, well, actually I'll kind of let that be a surprise for that video, but I'm gonna be able to give away even more than just this because of, uh, you know, how generous and awesome this community is. But again, I'll let that uh, be in the giveaway video. And again, this is not the giveaway video. It'll be a separate video. It's either gonna post um, later that same day or maybe the next, I guess we'll both find out together. It depends on how quickly I can edit this. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed these if you pick them up. I'm blown away by them. And yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for that giveaway video and have a nice rest of your day. Thanks.